Hi, in my first video about Cubases on this channel I talked about how this Steinberg mobile door could be used as a sketchbook for a music production while you're on the road, which can then be finished later in Cubase, it's Big Brother. Well, the new Cubases version has just added a major feature which makes this even easier because it allows you to export a Cubases project and immediately import it into Cubase or even some other doors. So let's have a look at that and let's go. Now, as I discussed in my first video, even before Cubase is 3.7.5, the new release, it was possible to import a Cubase project into Cubase using the special Cubase project importer, which was a separate piece of software that you can see over here. And it's still available for macOS and Windows. And after installing this in Cubase, you have a file option over here, file import Cubase project, which allows you to select a Cubase project and then import it into Cubase. However, this is of course a separate piece of software which needs to be maintained and tested separately of Cubase and Cubase. So the new version of Cubase actually allows you to export your project in the DAW project format. And as you may remember, that's exactly the project format that was added in Cubase 14, which allows you to interchange projects between different DAWs because it's a generic project format for DAWs. And this so-called DAW project format is not only supported by Cubase, but also by some other DAWs like Bitwig and Studio One. And now also Cubase has been added to that list, having the ability to import and export projects in the DAW project file format. So let's have a look at how this works in Cubase and Cubase 14. So let's start up the new version of Cubase here. And as you could just see in that opening screen, I am running Cubase 3.7.5.8. It's an early access version that was provided to me by Steinberg, so I could make this video for you. However, note that this video is not sponsored in any way, no money changed hands. And if I now go to my project in Cubase, for example, I push browse here. I can now, for example, open the smear demo project, which it loads up. And if you have Cubase, you may recognize it. Let's have a short listen. Yeah, so there's a number of features that are used here. I see MIDI tracks with piano and pad, for example. And the piano is using the Grand S90 from the Cubase factory preset. The pad is using Microsonic Warm Pad. There's a number of drum tracks, which are mostly using drums from the AM Smear Kit. There are some audio recordings, bass, two rhythm guitars. There are some insert effects on those audio tracks and also some send effects. So it's a pretty full featured project. So let's try to export this in DAW project format from Cubase and then import it into Cubase 14. For that, we need to go to media over here. And as you can see, there is a share option. If we select that, we now have the ability to either share the project as a Cubase project or as a DAW project. So let's choose the DAW project format. It's exporting. And I can now save this as a file in my iCloud, for example. I'll share the smear too. Save. And in Cubase 14, and you have to have at least version 14020 for this, by the way, you can now go to File, Import, Door Project. And I'm just going to import it into the current project. On my iCloud drive, you can see that I have the smear to door project. Let's make first sure that I have that local so that the import doesn't take so long. Import it. And as you can see, I get all the tracks of the original project from Cubase into Cubase now. Let's have a short listen. Now, if you remember how the project sounded in Cubase, you may notice that there are a couple of differences. And that's because there are currently still some limitations with regard to what exactly can be imported and exported in that DAW project format from Cubase into Cubase 14. Let's, for example, have a look at the list that Steinberg provided with regard to these limitations. 
Now in general, the door project interchange between Cubase's and Cubase and other doors support all these features in this list over here. And as you can see, even some insert and send effects are supported and specific effects and instruments in Cubase's are mapped to other effects and instruments in Cubase. But of course, that also means that some plugins and some virtual instruments will not transfer over one to one. So in that case, Steinberg advises to just bounce the tracks to audio, which will transfer over one to one and which you can then import into Cubase and it will sound the same. And before I continue, if you like this video or find it useful at all, please give it a big thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm so that it gets shown to more people. Subscribe to the channel and ring the little bell icon if you want to get notified when I publish another video. For even more support, you can use the super thanks button below, probably over here somewhere. Or if you intend to buy anything at one of these stores, I have many affiliate links in the description. And if you click one of those before buying anything at the store, I will get a small commission without any additional cost to you, which is highly appreciated. But let's get back to Cubase's 3.7.5. Now, apart from these general limitations, there are also a couple of door specific limitations. If you look at that list, you can see that they expect to add a number of the following features via a later update, which is time stretching, automation, and having multiple outputs. Some notable features which are not supported are markers, folder tracks, MIDI effects, and video. And in Cubase's 14, the most notable thing that I ran into is the fact that there is still a bit of an issue with sample rates. For example, for that smear demo project that I just showed you, if I let Cubase create a new project when I import the DAW project from Cubase's, it created a 48 kilohertz project with 44K audio files, and that resulted in the audio not playing back in the right tempo. So what did work is knowing that the audio files are in 44K, if I just imported it into a 44K project, and then all was well as you could just hear. Now, if you look at the list over here, there are some other restrictions for Cubase, but also for Bitwig Studio and for Studio One. But let's have a look at the example that I just imported into Cubase to see what the impact of these limitations are specifically. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but the piano track kind of sounded a bit weird. So let's have a listen to that in solo. And this sounds much more, well, almost staccato compared to how it sounded in Cubase's. Because let's have a listen to this track in Cubase's. As you can hear, much more legato. So if we open this MIDI over here, you can see that it has velocity data in there, but there's also CC64, which is the sustain pedal. And if we now look at Cubase, and if we open the MIDI part, you can see that there's velocity data there but no sustain data. So that's the reason why it sounds different. Basically the sustain pedal did not get transferred over correctly. And that's probably what they meant by this limitation. MIDI CC, pitch band and similar is not supported. I'm not sure whether they're still planning to support this, but obviously it would be nice if all of this data would be transferred over if you have a MIDI part in your project and want it to sound exactly the same. But let's also take a look at an example of things that do get transferred over correctly. For example, if you look at this lead guitar part over here and I open the send effects, you can see that there's a reverb and a delay on there. And let's have a look at the delay. And you can see that it's set to an eighth note with a feedback of 35%. So let's see what it looks like in Cubase. The lead guitar send two and send two has a mono delay on there. And you can see over here that the delay is set to an eighth note with 35% feedback. So you can see that some of these effects with their parameters get transferred over correctly, even though they're not exactly the same plugin, of course. But this was an example of the native delay plugin in Cubase's and the native delay plugin in Cubase. Now in this video, I'm mostly focused on exporting from Cubase's and then importing it into Cubase, which is most useful for my workflow. But the other way around is also possible, of course. You can export a project from Cubase in DAW project format and then import it into Cubase's and then work on that in the mobile app. So all in all, after having tried this for a number of projects, I think realistically you should not expect to make a full blown out production in Cubase's, for example, a full mix with automation and all kinds of effects in there and have it transferred over correctly to Cubase one-on-one -on -one, sounding exactly the same. However, I do think that it will work quite well as a sketchbook, noting down your basic ideas, maybe quickly recording or composing a part in Cubase's on the road while you're away from your studio, playing around with it in Cubase's, 
and then afterwards taking it back into your studio, export it as a DAW project and import it as a DAW project in Cubase and finish it with probably the better sample libraries and plugins that you have in Cubase or maybe even with analog hardware like I have in the rack here behind me. That would be my workflow anyway. But let me know how you feel about this. Do you feel this is a worthwhile addition to Cubase's? Or what extensions or fixes would you need to make it worthwhile to you? Please let us know in the comments so we can have a bit of discussion on this. Now if you're really into doing some music production on the road in Cubase's, then you should probably also check out my other video on the previous release of Cubase's in which they added a lot of very nice and professional sounds with some new virtual instruments as well as an orchestral library. I'll link it over here, check it out, enjoy and see you soon.